I repeat, in three days. We rebuke the enemy in the name of Jesus, and we refuse to bow before you. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's give the praise and worship team a hand. Amen. Thank you. Sweetheart, you did so good. Hallelujah. So we're just all learning here. This is all new to us. But you know what? God's in control. Amen? Amen. There's something else that's on my heart. And you know, it, it is burning. And it's so deep down inside that unless I get it out, I'm not going to feel comfortable. Amen? So I hope I don't offend you. I hope I bless you. But I just have this to say. Listen carefully. I love you all so very much. And I'm so proud of you all. And as a pastor of the Redwood Church of God, you're covered in prayer. I want you to know that. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, amen. So Pentecost is not this Sunday. Excuse me, tomorrow. But it's the following Sunday. Amen? The 23rd, I believe. Is that right, Norma? Okay. And so we're, we're observing that in our hearts. Amen? Even though we won't have a, a church service on Sunday because we're honoring God on Saturdays now, um, we want to observe Pentecost. Amen? And we want to give it recognition in our hearts of what happened and is available for all of us where the Holy Spirit descended upon the believers up there in that upper room. Amen? And it's going to happen here and it is happening here. Amen? And so um, a couple of us have been fasting and in observance. I'm just ending a seven-day fast. Um, I'm going to end it today after service, but I've been so blessed. But in observance of Pentecost, I'm going to do a three-day fast starting Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And then when we come together Saturday, we can celebrate some more. Did you have something, Norma? Come on up. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Um, this, the, the holidays, the, the, the five books of Moses are a great, excitement when we look at that and, and bring Yeshua into the midst of it. And for years, it's been a, a, a pain in my soul that there are two different countings for Pentecost. Uh, one, like I said, is a Sadducee, one is a Pharisee. The Pharisees believe in the resurrection, the Sadducees don't. Remember that? Jesus, or that whole thing, right? So there's two different countings. And when you read it in Scripture in the five books of Moses, it says after the Passover the next day, after the, uh, excuse me, after the sh Sabbath, the day, the next day, you start counting. It's called counting the Omer, the 50 days between Passover and Pentecost. 50 being Shavuot, seven sevens plus one. There's a lot of terminology. But in one end, the, the, the confusion is most people believe that the Sabbath is a Friday. That's the only Sabbath from Friday night to Saturday night. There are other Sabbaths in the five books of Moses, which are feasts and festivals, and they are considered Sabbaths as well. So the confusion has come in this. And I'm not going to get too deep off into that because it, it can go on and on for a long time. But one thing I do want to say that's a great excitement. Every time when we approach Pentecost, you know, Jesus said that 40, they go to the upper room, wait for the promise of the Father to come down from on high. That's the Holy Spirit, right? Well, all the way from Adam and Eve to Jesus, you know, ugh, it was really wobbly, right? And then Jesus, yay, the bright light, right? And then Jesus is 40 days, he goes up and he tells the disciples and they go into the upper room. And the first, you know, you have the Acts of the Apostle, they receive the Holy Spirit, right? Well, that was just that first time. So I'm always trying to recapture that experience. 
But here we're being given an opportunity instead of whining about who's doing what right and wrong, okay? Jesus is a feast of first fruits, okay? We can celebrate now this Pentecost between Shavuot and next Pentecost. We can just celebrate the Holy Spirit because he is alive and he dwells in us but he wants to have a more intimate and deep relationship with him. So how much greater is it when we have a celebration like a birthday celebration? Cheryl's birthday we celebrate. Sister Elizabeth, cricket, dad, pastor, so the Holy Spirit. Amen. Every day we celebrate the Holy Spirit, amen? Amen, but this is a special time. Okay, um, Lori. Lori um, texted me this morning with an awesome word and it so anointed and moved me that I asked her to be prepared to share it with the people. I just want to say, sorry, at the Redwood Church of God, we allow the gifts of the Holy Spirit to flow freely. Amen. Everything done decently and in order. Amen. As, as so the Holy Spirit wills. Hi, my family. I love you guys. And so uh, last night, I was just praying. I was like, Lord, do you have a, is there something that you want to say to the church? It's on our, our fresh start. It says, I am preparing a people who will seek my face. Search for me, search for me with all my heart. They will call upon me and I will listen. I will be found in them. I will gather them from all nations, a people after my own heart. I will train their hands for war and their fingers for battle. I will pour out my spirit on them in triple portions. I am the I am. I'm not used to writing. The spirit that dwells in them, I am the I am. I have made the earth by power and established the world by wisdom. I have stretched out the heavens by my discretion. The Lord your God has done it. I am the I am, the Alpha, the Omega. I will inhabit the praises of my people, and I will do great and mighty things such as you have not seen before. Remain in me, obey my voice, so you shall be my people, and I will be your God, thus says the Lord. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. That's a good word. We have a guest speaker uh, in a little bit, and, but there is one verse that the Lord wanted me to, to bring forth to the body. And this is out of the Amplified, which I've been into a lot lately, and I really like it because it just stretches it out and gives the word real clarity. And this applies to this church right now at this time. How many people want the love of God in their life? Raise their hands. Yeah. What is love? I know we got 1 Corinthians chapter 13. But what is the outworking of love? Listen. This is 1 John 3.18. Little children, believers, dear ones, let us not love merely in theory, with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion. But in action and in truth, in practice and in sincerity, because practical acts of love are more than words. Anyone can say, I love you. But God's saying, that's not enough. The acts and the truth of your love will demonstrate the love of God that is in you. By this, because it goes on to say, by this we will know without any doubt that we are of the truth and will assure our heart and quiet our conscience before him. Amen? Hallelujah. Doug, everybody look back there. Raise your hand. Miles. 
don't bow down. There's Miles and Tony in the back. These three men were here last night until about 2.30, or this morning to about 30, setting up our sound system and the video and getting everything worked up. We're, hello, YouTube. Are we, are we live, Doug? <laughs> well, I know I'm alive. No, Jesus is alive. Amen. It's being recorded. Okay. And so we're, we got a lot of bugs to work out, a new, um, new sanctuary and, and new environment. So there's many things that need to be done. But I just wanted to acknowledge um, these three before you for their dedication and their service to the Redwood Church of God, to all of you. Can we give them a hand? You know, you can't just go anywhere and find men of God that will serve in this capacity. Amen? They're a gift to all of us. Amen. Okay, in speaking of people who, for the, not in this building, but who have been to the Redwood Church of God for the very first time today? Anybody? Stand up. Stand up, brother. And come on up here. So I wish I could say Sean is our new, newest member in one of our houses, but he's living somewhere else. But as soon as he, he uh, was free, he gave me a call. And I just want to say something about this man. We go back a long ways, and he loves the Lord. And he told me when he was still behind the wall, Pastor James, when I get out, I want to come to your church, and I want to serve. Amen? Hallelujah. And for those of you that don't know, we're going to do a facelift on this sanctuary in the building here. And those of you that and those of you that know Sean know he's very skilled in construction and carpentry. And he's he's volunteered to take over the responsibility of doing our facelift. Yeah. And um, we're going to get on it pretty soon, and um, we're just so honored to have him uh, in the church and to volunteer and to do the things that he volunteered to do. Amen? So you brought your Bible up here. What does that mean? I, I, have, oh, I have a few um, verses I want to share. So I got out of prison on Monday, and uh, I did 24 months. Um, I was following my convictions, and uh, sometimes when you're not led by the Holy Spirit, you can be convicted in this Bible to do things and you can get in trouble for them. And uh, I broke a no contact order. I wanted to support my family. So I want to share First Timothy 5.8. It says, but if anyone does not provide for his own, especially for those of his own household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. That conviction right there. I wanted. I wanted to be a part of my family's life, and uh, there's there's things we have to do. Even though, even though we're convicted to do things, we still have to follow the laws. In uh, in Acts, I found a no contact order while I was down. I wasn't aware of it until I until I read it, and that was like the Lord pointed this out to me. It's in chapter four. And it starts off in, in chapter 4. It talks about um, Acts. Yes. And it talks about uh, Peter and John. And they were, they, were, they were asked not to speak in Jesus' name. And when I, was, when, I was breaking the, when I was breaking the law, my no contact order, I was speaking in Jesus' name, and I, was, and I was given from the heart of Jesus to my family. And so, so they called the... This is 18. It's just, I'm going to read just, the, just the, what, what, what they, how they said to respond to this. It says, so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all or teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, whether it is right or right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. I like that because what he's saying there is he's saying, you judge. That's not, 
He's not, he's not making a choice right there. He's just saying, you judge that. He says, for, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen, which we have heard. Jesus has done a mighty work in my life, and he's, and he's, he's trying to lead me. And I'm trying to hang on, you know, but it's a daily struggle. I allowed smoking to come in my life. I allowed swearing to come into my life, and I got caught up into the world. Um, I guess what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at, my my whole testimony, is uh, my my actions. I wanted to honor God, and um, and that's what I intend to do from here on out. It's, I I've been out for five days, and everyone around me smokers, and I used to smoke a pack a day, and. Um, I don't want to go back to that. When I was getting released from prison, um, my no contact order was removed one month before I got out. Now I still have to go to court because prior to that I was, um, okay, so I went to prison for a probation violation. I came out with a new charge coming against me for a no contact order. I'm, I'm praying that the courts will run it concurrent, and I can go back to work and, and move forward in life, and then petition the, the no contact order stipulations to be uh, approved by DOC. As it is right now, the no contact order's been removed, which is a blessing. It means that the Lord's working, and, he, and the Lord had to do uh, the Lord had to do uh, miracles to get me back to Seattle. And I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to have a church. I'm happy to have all the people that, that love me, that remembered me, and all the and, and honored me in all the things that I was doing that I was doing right. Um, but I love you, church, and and thank you for accepting me back. Amen. Let's uh, all stretch our hands forward and let's pray for Sean. Father, we just thank you for this brother, man of God. Thank you for the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all unrighteousness, that we can enter boldly into the throne room of grace to obtain favor in our times of need. We ask you, God, to give Sean grace. Let him find favor as he goes forward, Father. Let whoever is in contact with these um, court proceedings and the things that he's about to face, we pray right now ahead of time that the Holy Spirit go before him. And let him find favor, God, not only in your sight, but in the sight of man. And let him walk free and clean as he's rededicated his life back to you, God. And he's volunteered and offered his services right here in this church uh, to give back to your house. So we thank you, Lord, for him. And I ask you to bless him and uh, fill him with your spirit. Give him confidence and courage. And most of all, God, let him know how much he's loved. Cast your eyes upon him, God. Measure him fully. You know every need and every concern. We ask you to come to his aid and help him, God, as he moves forward. And the Redwood Church of God, we want to let him know that he is welcome. We embrace you. And we're so happy you're here. You do have a family. And we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stay here. Stay here. You got a word? Um, as we were praying for favor for you, Sean, I just saw the Lord take, it was like a, one of those dippy things that you do in a jar of honey. And it was like God just took and he dipped that dippy thing and he picked it out and he just held it over you and he just swirled. And it was like honey, just, you know, just, I just saw favor just swirling all down and you were completely covered in that sweet favor. Amen. Okay. How many of you like to be happy? Raise your hand. Okay, so I'm going to give you a chance to get happy. Because God loves a cheerful giver. Amen? We're going to do our tithes and offerings. We're going to try something different this time. We used to pass the basket around. But we put a basket up here in front. So I'm going to pray. And after I'm done praying, just bring your tithes and offerings to the Lord here. Amen? And Leah, come on up here. 
You need to get your laptop set up. So, Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. And ask you, Lord, to bless your people. As they give with a cheerful heart. As they sow their finances into your kingdom. Lord, we offer our tithes for two reasons. Number one, you commanded us to. And number two, we love you. And we pray over these finances, Lord, and these offerings, that you will multiply them. You're not a God of division or addition. You're a God of multiplication. And we just receive all of your promises. We ask you to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on your people. Increase their finances, Lord, as they give. Bring fortune and, and uh, many blessings in the financial realm. Let their cars run better. Let they get better gas mileage. Let the tires last longer. Let their clothes run longer, Lord. Just bring blessings into the life. Let them open up their mailboxes and find unexpected checks in the name of Jesus. Bless your people, God. Your word says that you will pour us out a blessing that we don't have room enough to receive. Amen? Amen. So as the Lord leads you, come bring your, your offering. Join me in singing this song because God is good. Amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, you must it never fails me. All my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice you have led me to the fire, and in darkest night, you are close like no other. I've known you as a father, I've known you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. Come on, let's worship. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Come on, let's declare that. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running after, it's running up to me. Your goodness is running after, it's running up to me. With my life laid down, I'm surrendered now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running up to me. Amen. Hallelujah. Tony, come up here. 
Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Miles, come up here. Let's stand here and face the people. Every house of God, the pastor needs dedicated servants to run and look over the operations of the house of God. And in this place today, I propose and submit before the body a head deacon and a deacon. All of you that are in favor, say aye. Anyone disfavor? Say nay. It is unanimous. Stretch your hands forward. Father God, Pastor, could you come up here? Could you anoint these two men in their new uh, offices? Father, thank you. I thank you for your servants. I thank you for their faithful hearts to give themselves to you, to walk with you, and to honor you. And we just pray for them now as they take this position, this place of responsibility, this place of authority in your house. We ask in Jesus' name, let the mantle of God come on them and uh, fresh anointing and strength, ability to see what needs to be seen and to uh, accomplish the things that need to be done so that the house of God is orderly and beautiful. And, uh, and, and so the things are just taken care of and a load is taken off the pastor and he's able to, to just uh, hand the responsibility to them and they're able to carry it out. And they're faithful and they're blessing in it, Lord, now we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, amen, thank you. And so in doing this, I'm announcing to the body that these two men have authority. And so... One of them happens to come up and ask you to do something that maybe you, you might disagree with or don't like. Just humble yourself and follow their authority. And the house of God will prosper. Amen? Amen. God bless you. Oh. Um, as we began praying, as soon the second, it was um, unanimous and the pastor was like, okay, it's, it's done. It's finished. Before Pastor Bob even got over here. Um, I immediately saw you both in very warrior attire, like with a sword in your hand and just ready to go, just like, like this. And not that you are, you know, um, God has now positioned you and um, equipped you because you are a um, front line of protection for this body. It is now done, and I, I just see you in that attire. Hallelujah. Okay, to go ahead, Miles. You're dismissed. Uh, Tony, could you uh, grab those offerings? So let's stretch our hands forward, everybody. Thank you again, God, for your, uh, for your children, your servants, your faithful givers into your kingdom. We ask you now to take these finances and multiply them for the furtherance of your kingdom. We thank you, Lord, for your provisions. For uh, you are the Lord that provides everything that we need. And we lean to you and we look to you for everything. And as we go forward in this ministry, just let it be known and let it be spoken, God. It's all according to your glory. All according to what you're doing in us. We never get ahead of you, God. You are our leader. We follow after you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, um, there's another word that's come forth. Do you want to come up here? Okay. Holy Spirit's busy today, amen? <laughs> this is what we like. The Redwood Church of God, you know, God spoke early on about the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. So more and more, is going to come forth as we go forward, especially as Redwoods, meaning unity and oneness, walking and holding each other up in love. Amen? We care about each other. It's not about the pastor. It's not about the deacons. It's not about the musicians. It's about the body of Christ. And there's 
we're going to grow and God has need for leaders and people with hurt with the gifts of the Holy Spirit that aren't afraid to walk in them. And so we want to allow that to be manifested here. If you have a gift, let me know. We'll talk and pray and give you an opportunity to use that gift here for, what's the purpose of the gifts of the Spirit? That's right, amen. So that's how we judge it, amen? Thank you, Pastor. The Lord showed me uh, before I came in that he was going to anoint the church today and that he was there was going to be healing released in this house. And I had forgotten that. And I'm sitting there and he showed me that again. So I, I say the Lord God says that he is releasing healing in this house. Receive what God is doing now. He is touching you and healing you. Thank you, Father. We praise you and bless you, Lord, for your anointing, for your healing in this house. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We give you the glory. Amen. Thank you. You're doing so good. Thank you so much. Thank you, right? Give her a hand, you guys. Her. Yeah. And so I guess that just ties right into what Cricket... Uh, mentioned to me. Come on up. So Cricket has a gift. It's called a word of knowledge. And also she walks in the gifts of healing. Am I correct? Yes. So for those of you who don't know what a word of knowledge is, it's uh, supernatural knowledge, not of our own mind but supernaturally received from the Lord and the Holy Spirit reveals that to us and that word of knowledge is going to be spoken now. And so she's in, in this particular case, is it for healing? So however God, however the Holy Spirit communicates with you is on an individual basis in order for her to know what to share to the people. It's not of her own mind. Again, it's supernatural. God's downloading in her what he wants to do through us. Amen? You, you get it? In the name of Jesus, I just bind right now fear. In Jesus' name. Yeah, I thank you, Lord, just for releasing your spirit right now. Somebody here is experiencing hemorrhoids, and God wants to heal that. Come on up. Do you, does it? Are you affected right now? You too, Linda. No. Okay. So, Lord Jesus, I just thank you for honoring and blessing this request. Lord Jesus, you said here on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven, there's no pain, there's no suffering, there's no sickness, there's no disease. So we bring heaven down here on earth right now and release it into your daughter. In Jesus' name. We speak to the hemorrhoids and we curse you. Just like Jesus cursed the fig tree and said, produce no more fruit. We curse you and say, produce no more fruit. Shrivel and be gone right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for this healing. We thank you for sealing this healing and that it won't return in Jesus' name. You're welcome. Okay, so I have one more, um, just a second. I have one more. Somebody has something going on with their stomach. Come on out, come on out. Anybody else? So how long has this been affecting you? Three months, three months. So do you, does it hurt right now? stomach. I haven't been able to eat much and it's just made me uh, sick to my stomach. Right now for releasing your kingdom healing power with fire right now. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you for touching your daughter. We 
church infirmity. We come up against the spirit of infirmity right now. We rebuke you. We renounce you. You have no authority here. You have no right in this house. So we command you right now. Me, go right now, infirmity. We break your power. Get under Lori's feet right now in Jesus' name. We just thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So how are you feeling now? Hallelujah. I feel blessed. Hallelujah. Uh, kind of. Well, I have like, I have a, um, they think it might be like a, a huge hernia that's like in deep. And it feels like that. It feels like it's something in there like the size of a, a grapefruit Can or something. Right now? Yeah. And they're sending me to uh, an intestinal doctor. So put your hand back on there. Their doctor's going to say I'm fine. I'm That's healed. Right. That's right, because we take authority over this hernia right now, and we curse you. We renounce you. We break your power. We command you right now to shrivel up right now. Dissolve. Dissolve. Go to nothing right now. We take authority over you. Jesus, we thank you for giving us all authority, and we take it right now and release it into your daughter. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. It feels smaller. It feels smaller. Okay, good. So keep your hand there. So, Lord, we thank you for the smaller, but you don't do things part way. We're asking, Lord, complete healing right now. Dissolve right now. To nothing. Dissolve right now. Hernia, we're speaking to you. We're commanding you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now check. Yeah, it feels better. It, it feels like it's gone. Hallelujah. It is. Yeah. There's not a big lump there. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just praise the Lord. Just bless him. We just thank you, Lord, for finishing what you started in Lori's body in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. What's going on? Well, I am almost four years stage three ovarian cancer. And I just, well, the first day I walked into this building, um, I actually was in horrible pain and had to go to the emergency room that night, and I was in two days in the hospital. I have some sort of intestinal blockage because of the adhesions and all the... I have a scar from here to here, so there's all kinds of stuff going on in there. And so... He just told me scar tissue, Yeah. so that's what we're going to do. Amen. Sure. Thank you for the blessing that you said. Therefore, right now, to release your healing into your daughter... In Jesus' name. We command scar tissue right now to dissolve. Yep, dissolve right now. This blockage, come out right now. In the name of Jesus, blockage be gone right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Can you check it now? It feels like things are loosening in there. There's a, there's a constant tightness. Yes. Stretch your hands forward, everybody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are the Lord that healeth. Yes, Jehovah Rapha. Touch your body in the name of Jesus. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Touch your people. The word came forth that there's healing and deliverance here today. Hallelujah. God, you are so merciful. We love your people, God. And we love you. We cry, Abba, Father. Abba, Father. 
Abba, oh, come, come, Abba, Father. Your eyes go to and fro throughout the whole earth, looking at the hearts of men and women who are loyal to them, God. Why? So you may show yourself mighty on their behalf. Amen, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did I leave anybody else out? Okay. We're going to just let the Holy Spirit have his way in Irene. Amen? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Back problem. It's being healed right now. Receive it. In the name of Jesus. Let that healing come. Hallelujah. Receive it in faith. Amen? Do not believe the lies of the devil. We believe the truth of God. We stand in that truth. Hallelujah. Okay, so um, just moving along here, we have some things to, to continue to do. Um, but we will stop for the Holy Spirit. Uh, so, two Sundays from now, we're going to have um, a change in the, in the services. It's going to be on a Sunday, just on May 30th at 11 o'clock. Yeah. Um, Apostle Elizabeth, who I introduced last week, I would like her to come up and just share with you all what's going on in two weeks from now on a Sunday. Come on. Give her a hand, you guys. This woman is a mighty woman of God who opened up her heart to all of us to come to her house and have services. God brought us together and it's a wonderful relationship that we have and um, the Tabernacle Temple of Praise. Amen. 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 I would like to salute you all in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Are you blessed so far? You are looking so wonderful. And I love it. I love it. I love the spirit that is in this house. And I thank God for the presence that is moving. I was here on Thursday and the woman of God prayed for me. When I was coming, my, I had high blood sugar. And I was having a headache. And when I came to the house of God, I said, I'm not going home when I'm feeling the way I was feeling. And she prayed for me. And there was a man who was sitting here. I don't know what we call him. He also prayed and said, you are healed. So when I went and did the test, it was, it was when, I was, when I was coming, it was 300. When I was going back, it was 153. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm blessing the name of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we have Jehovah Rapha. Jesus Christ is the healing balm of Gilead. And we are here for the healing. Nothing else. We are here to be healed. God is healing people, their bodies, even their minds, even their spirits. There is a release of anointing of healing in this place in the name of the Lord. So the reason I'm standing here is that we will be having... A wonderful service on uh, on 30th. A welcoming service. We want to welcome you officially in Tabernacle Temple of Praise. And the Lord just gave me this word in the book of Psalms 133. I want to read it. And that's why we are welcoming you, you here officially. And uh, we will eat lunch together as the children of God because God is calling us to unite, to unite as the body of Christ. Regardless of our backgrounds, where we have come from, but God is looking. Jesus said, we have to be united and work together. And he won't come back until we preach this gospel and we become one. And the world knows that we are not of this world, but we belong to God. And this is the beginning of the great things that the Lord is about to do in our midst in the name of Jesus. 
There shall be great move of God because we are going to work together. I believe we are not here just to rent the building. We are here for the purposes of the kingdom of God. We are not here just to, to pay the rent and we pay the rent. There is a reunion in the realms of the spirit. There is a great move of God in this place. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your anointing and our anointing will do great things in the name of Jesus. And this is the time where we are going to burn the, 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 the wheat of the Philistine, as Samson did. You know, in the time of Samson, he used, he used to tie three, three foxes together and burn the fire and put on fire. And they destroy the wheat of the Philistine. Now we are coming together as the body of Christ. We must come again as the powers of darkness. We must put the devil down where he belongs in the mighty name of Jesus. And we must raise a banner high and declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord and the King of Kings. And every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that he is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. In the name of Jesus. Jesus must be exalted. We must leave Jesus in America. We must be relieve Jesus all over the world. The Bible says when we lift him high, he draws men to himself. Our work is to lift Jesus high. So let me read and sit down in Jesus' name. Behold how good and how present it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is the precious oil upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that came down upon the skirt of his garments, like the, like the dew, oh, I'm sorry, like the dew of Hermon, that cometh down upon the mountains of Zion. For there Jehovah commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. There is nowhere else we can get the commanded blessing, commanded. We are not asking of them. They are coming automatically when we get together as the body of Christ. When we unite and work together. And you know what? The campaign we are doing is not for us to be known, but for Jesus to be known. It's not for us to increase, but for Jesus to increase. For it's our time to decrease that he may increase. May the Lord God bless you. And I love you, and I'll be worshiping with you anytime I'm available on Saturdays. I love you so much. Amen. We love you too. Thank you so much. So that's 11 o'clock on uh, May 30th, correct? Okay. And so the 29th, it will not be a service, but we're going to move that service to the 30th, just temporarily, just for this um, welcoming um, service that... Um, that uh, Apostle Elizabeth has arranged for us to be. Amen? Can you all make it? Yeah. Amen. Let me let me see your hands if those of you planning to come. Okay. All right, good. Do you know that um, that God says we're trophies? Hello. Do you know God says you're trophies? Amen. And, uh, yes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Go, Jesus. What's the matter? I'm speaking in the microphone. Oh, yeah, I understand. Do you want to hear Okay, Deacon. <laughs> yeah, forgive me. I just want to say, um, Irene just let me know that God right now is loosening up that tightness in her stomach. Amen. Yes, Amen. Uh, I can feel it's like uh, things are loosening inside there. When I stand up, it's very tight. and I mean, right now I can feel that it's loosening. If I stretch out, so yeah. I know oh, God's yeah. healing me. Yeah. I know he's healing me. He's told me I will be healed by next year, this time. So. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, so as I was saying, um, <clears throat> we're trophies. We've got, we're God's trophies. Amen. And I love you all, and God loves you all. And uh, God likes to show us off. He does. And in that spirit, I invited Pastor Bob to come and be our guest speaker today. 
He's my pastor, and I want to show you off to him. Amen? Give him a hand clap. Bless the Lord. This has been good, hasn't it? This has been good. I, I'm sitting down there and I'm thinking while I'm just uh, watching everything. Uh, Pastor James, this was meant for you. You're, you're in the right place. Seriously, you know. I mean, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Amen? And so... You, you don't run before God, because if you run before God, you're not with God. Amen? Jesus said, where I am, there my servant will be also. And so, so if I run before, then I'm in a place where he's not. Amen? And so I wait on him, and I walk with him and let him lead me and guide me to where he wants me to be. And in that, I'm able to accomplish the will of God, and you're right where God wants you and doing exactly what he wants you to do. And it's exciting to watch it, you know. Amen. You, know, you, you get a few things as you grow. <laughs> I love your spirit. Yeah, I love power. Yeah, so anyways... Praise the Lord. It's awesome. Thank you for inviting me to come. It's awesome to get to be with you and see what the Lord is doing. Amen? This place is going to fill up. It's going to fill up real fast. Amen? And uh, you'll be busting at the seams. And that's awesome. Um, I want to just ramble for a couple of minutes, if I can ramble before I preach or teach. Um I want to talk to you about vision. Vision. Where there's no vision, the people perish. My granddaughter, my my couple of my grandkids was over yesterday, and and I have a family member who is they're rich. <laughs> Whenever they were, when uh, when my daughter my when my daughter married uh, this guy, his I I, I looked him up in the. And uh, they were in the newspaper years back, and they were $600 million back in the 90s, you know, the family. And so it came down, and so the family tree goes out and all that kind of stuff. So, so, so you got money. And maybe I'm making a mess here. Anyways, when you're, when you're, in, a, when, when you're in a place, you can look at others and think, well, they don't have much to say. You know, because you're not, you don't, you're not, you don't stand in my place, so you don't have that much to say. But I just ask a question. I said, uh, so what's, what's the most exciting th thing in your life right now? And, and she said, um, cheerleading. I said, cheerleading. So, so. And she said, but that's coming to a close because the school year's over. Cheerleading. Hmm. What's the most exciting thing in your life right now? Jesus. Where are you headed? So, so cheerleading is coming to an end. What do you see for the summer? I mean, just... You know, a girl in school. What do you see for the summer? Oh, get together with my cousins. Okay. What do you see for your life? Where are you headed? If I don't know where I'm going, if I don't have a vision, I'm there. I've arrived. But, and where there's no vision, the people perish. Where there's no, vi when there's no open revelation, what's God called me for? People cast off restraint. Because I can't find something better to do. I can't find something more exciting. Amen? And so, but God has something extremely exciting for you. Hallelujah. 
for you. I don't care where you're at. I don't care, you know, I don't care, you know, along the, along the span of life, you know, where, where am I? You know, there's something exciting to be involved in. And, um, and when I don't have that, then I'm open. I'm, I'm a, I am prey for the enemy because I don't have something, um, you, you know, whenever I started House of Mercy, um, you know, I, I used to tell people, this is what I felt like. I felt like I was holding the tow rope going up the mountain, you know, for a ski lift, you know. I was just holding onto the tow rope because, man, yeah, I, I was just being pulled into whatever it was that was ahead of me because, because there's a lot to do. And I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there and I'm seeing for you, you're holding the tow rope right now and you are, you, you're going someplace with this and because there's a, there's a wonderful vision and God wants to do a wonderful thing. And, uh, and God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen. And so, 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 you know, it's all you do is you just hold on. Here's what you say. Yes, Lord. Amen. You say, yes, Lord. You just get quiet before him and, and let him take you where he wants to take you. And, uh, and, and you, here's what you don't do. You don't allow fear to keep you from what God is calling you to. Amen. You, you don't, you don't allow that. He said, I didn't give you that spirit. That's not from God. Amen. And so if that's, that's, if that's stopping you, let me give you a verse. Outside the city, New Jerusalem, are the fearful and the unbelieving, the abominable and the sorcerers. Listen, listen to what he puts there. You know, if I allow a spirit of, of fear to dominate my life, outside are the fearful and the, and the unbelieving, the abominable and the whoremongers and the sorcerers. This, that's the group. So what do I do? Break free. Yeah. Amen. Break free. You don't stand there and, 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 and allow that thing to hold you. You break free from it. Amen. That is not from God. That's from hell. That's from the devil. Amen. And Sean, for you, get down low. Get down low. Don't go in and, 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 and talk to them like you are, you, you're in a place where you have the answer. And all like, no, you get down low. You're not talking to people who know God. You're, you, and so before honor is humility. And so you just get down low and you come in and you listen. And you, you listen a lot and speak a little. Amen. And, and just believe God for favor on your life whenever you go in there. Amen. All right. Okay, so yeah, so I was praying, asking God, what do I talk about? You know, because you know, there's a lot of wonderful things to talk about. I mean, you open the Bible, the Bible's just full from cover to cover, amen? And, and uh, I hope I heard God and I heard something good for you. Uh, yeah, I, I got two words, follow after, follow after. And so... The best leader is first the best follower. Amen? If you don't learn how to follow, you don't learn how to lead. I'm a man under authority, having men under me. If I don't know how to be under authority, I don't know how to be over people. Amen? <clears throat> because if I don't know, I don't, if, I, if I don't know what goes into the ingredients of, 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 taming myself and bringing myself under so that so that my job is please my boss I, I went to work for Boeing aircraft brought me to, to Seattle and uh, and I went I went went to, went to work for this boss and and, uh, and, <laughs> and aircraft and that kind of stuff I had, although I had 20 years in aircraft that wasn't my life that's not who I am Amen. God didn't make me to sit at a desk and do that. God made me to be a mouth. Amen. <clears throat> and so, so, but he asked me, what are you here for? And I said, my job is to make you look good. Amen. That was my job. Who's my boss? My job is to make, is to help, you know, I'm, I'm there to work for Hughes Aircraft, but he's my boss. And so, so whatever. Amen. All right. Okay. So. Follow after. Let me just give you a couple of verses. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your precious word. Thank you for the opportunity to preach the everlasting gospel.
And I ask in Jesus' name, Lord, that you would minister life and grace and mercy and peace and help to each and every heart this morning. May we go out a different way than we came in. I thank you, Lord, for the Redwood Church. I thank you, Lord, for, for the things that you're doing here. I thank you for Pastor James and Leah, Lord, and, and for their oversight. And I thank you for the gift of God and operation in him. I thank you for opening this door, Lord, and making this door uh, just so obvious that unless the Lord builds the, the church, they labor in vain that build it. And I thank you, Lord, that you're, you're, uh, you are building. And I thank you, Lord Jesus, for ears to hear and eyes to see and a heart that understands and the ability to follow after you in Jesus' name. Bless them in their endeavor. Bless the church in Jesus' mighty name and strengthen them. Open your word and teach us now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got four, four different verses I want to give you and just talk about them. Romans 14, 19 says, Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. So let us follow after the things that make for peace. Hmm. The wisdom that comes from above is first pure, then peaceable. Amen? The wisdom that comes from above is first pure, then peaceable. So, um, so, I don't do anything, I, I just do anything to make peace. No, I don't just do anything to make peace. I fight for peace. Amen? Jesus said, don't think I came to bring peace. I came to bring a sword. The things that want to keep you from peace need to be cut out and cut away. Amen? He's the prince of peace, and he doesn't coexist with any kind of wickedness or ungodliness. Say to the righteous, it shall be well with him. Say to the wicked, it will be ill with him. Amen? You know, it's not going to go okay. We just don't just peacefully coexist. Throw that in the trash. Amen? Amen? And so, listen, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. And so there's things that want to come into your life and want to have access to you and they want to take up your time and they want to take your life. And if you just, uh, it's just, you know, Mr. Milk Toast, amen, and you're just going to peacefully coexist with something that's there to destroy you, no, no, you don't peacefully, you destroy it. Amen? Yeah, the kingdom, where's the kingdom? Hallelujah. And so, and so if the kingdom is going to be within, then the king has a place on the throne of my heart. And the king is the one who is ruling and reigning. Amen? And the king is ruling and reigning because I demand from me, you will not. You, I, this stuff I will not anyway allow. Amen? And there's other things I demand will be there. Amen? Do I check with my flesh to find out if my flesh likes it? Amen. You know where flesh gets? On the cross. Hallelujah. So let us follow after the things which make for peace and the things wherewith one may edify another. So my job is I'm here to be a peacemaker. You know what I tell the leaders in our houses? I said, you're the, uh, you're the peacekeeper. You know who the, you, you know the, uh, the police, is a police officer a peacekeeper? Uh-huh. Okay, all right, hallelujah. So does he carry a gun? It, it, you, know, you know, the Bible says he doesn't bear the, the sword in vain. Amen? So, so if he's there to be the, uh, the peacekeeper, um, the... the he doesn't get called into situations where everything is just ducky and just fine. Everybody's having a good time. Amen. You don't call the police whenever everything's going good. You call the police whenever when something's gone awry. True or false? Yeah. Amen. And so, or, or, or whatever, you've got a problem. You need some help. 
Amen. And so, so you don't have any peace for some for some reason. And so you call the peace the peacekeeper. Amen. Blessed are the peacemakers. They're called sons of God. Amen. And so you do the things that make for peace. Sometimes, sometimes the things that make for peace are uh, they're not comfortable. Amen. So, so you know, I'm. You bring a guy into the house, and and, and you know, I, I suppose you do the same thing that you used, you used to do. You, know, you have people sign stuff before they get in. I will do this. I will do that. I will do this. I will refrain from that. I will refrain from that. And so that when, so whenever someone gets out of sorts and they decide, I don't want to do that. All I got to do is just get out a piece of paper. Did you sign this? Did you say you would do this? Who's doing that? The sheriff. The peacekeeper. The guy over the house. Amen? What's he doing? He's doing things that make for peace. Amen? Because he says, well, that doesn't give me peace. I don't like that. I don't want to do that. Oh, you don't like to do it? I see. So if we let you do what you want to do, then no one else has peace, but you have peace. Amen, Romy? Amen. And so, and so you don't just get to come and do whatever you want to do. What did they say to Jesus? We will not have this man rule over us. And what did Jesus say at the end? He said, bring my enemies here before me and slay them who would not have me rule over them. Amen? Jesus is going to rule or else, or else. Amen? Who is Jesus? He's the Prince of Peace. Amen? He's the Prince of Peace. You can't have, you can't have wickedness and righteousness rule together. Amen? And so... And so, where do I look first whenever it comes to, you know, when it, when it comes to um, uh, st things that are going on? There's, you know, there's always, there's always a disturbance here or a disturbance. There's something going on. And, uh, and you know, and being a leader, I'm called, I'm called on from time to time to get involved in something. I can hear something. I can hear an event. I can hear something going on. And, and on the inside... I want to grab somebody and wring their neck. You know what I'm saying? I want to fix this right now. But you know, it may not be the right thing to do. Maybe I just need to just be quiet and get quiet so that I'm quiet on the inside so that what I bring is the right remedy. Are you hearing me? So he says, he says, Let's follow after the things which make for peace. Maybe the thing that makes for peace is study to be quiet. Amen? Maybe the thing that makes for peace is be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to get angry. Amen? <clears throat> Hallelujah. And so he says, and the things wherewith one may edify another. Sometimes it's, we hear, but we don't hear. You ever have someone start talking at you? I mean, you've tried to, tried to, tried to talk to them. You've tried to make yourself um, apparent, make yourself known, your, your situation, your plight, whatever it is, make it known, but, but others aren't hearing you. And maybe it's because you're not saying it right. Maybe it's because, because of whatever. You know, but the but the communication isn't; it's not flowing, and and there's a, and there's friction, and there's a problem. And sometimes it's incumbent on a leader to just be quiet and listen, and 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 try and draw the people. You know, listen, listen to this verse. Counsel is in the heart of a man like deep waters, and a man of understanding draws it out. Counsel is in the heart of a man like deep waters, and a man of understanding draws it up. So what's, what, what is it saying? It says that man's answer is inside of him. It's in his heart. But it takes someone with understanding to draw his answer out of him so that he can begin to see his answer. 
So for me, my job is ask a lot of questions. Don't make a lot of statements. Ask questions. I want to hear, can you say that a different way? Can I hear it a different way? Because, because I want to hear you give your answer. And then I'm going to take what you've given to me and I'm going to give it back to you. Because you know what you'll accept? Your answer. Amen? I want to help you with your own answer. And so what, what am I trying to do? Trying to make peace. Trying to make peace. And so, but if I just jump on you and I just start telling you this and that and the other because, it, because it's relieving me of something inside of me because you've made me angry and I want to tell you something. Amen? Am I doing all right here? I know this is simple, but, you know, it's simple. Hallelujah. It's, it's practical. Sometimes simple, practical things help. Okay. Now, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 1 says, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So, good. Hallelujah. Let's prophesy. Let's bring the house down. I'm in for it, man. Uh, pro, uh, it's First uh, Corinthians fourteen one. Yeah, <clears throat> and so he says, um, "Desire spiritual gifts, yes." But in my spiritual gifts, he says, he begins it with, "Follow after charity." Amen. So I'm following after the love of God. I want the love of God. Some people want to be heard. Hallelujah. You know, and that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a, you know, um, people need to find themselves. People need to find their place and all that kind of stuff. But, but, so, so let me just talk to you. Can I talk to you? Is this going to mess this all up if I get up here? I like to get where the people are and talk to the people. We have to grow. We have to grow. The Bible says grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so I grow, I grow in grace. Grace. Let me give you my simple definition of grace. Grace is the desire and the power to do the will of God unmerited favor from God, but if I have no desire and I have no power to do the will of God, I, you know, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. How can you fail of the grace of God if I don't have any, if there's nothing in it, in, in me, amen? Listen, listen, let me give you a, let me give you a verse for it. He says, uh, he says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it's God who's at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Grace. Grace is at work in me, both to will, there's a desire, and to do, there's the power, both to will and to do of his good pleasure, amen? So he says, grow in grace. I want you to grow in your desire for you to walk in, for you to do the will of God, amen? Because if you, because if Jesus saved me and I just, just running, running wild, just doing whatever I want to do, but Jesus saved me, it's like, take it someplace else, please. Hallelujah. Amen, all of me. And so, so I need to grow in what the Lord gives me. It's, you know, a river is wonderful inside of its banks. But when the river goes over the banks, there's a lot of destruction that happens with it. Amen. And so God gives me a course to run on and the course I can find in his word. Amen. It is written. And whenever I'm within the boundaries of what his word says, I'm in a safe place. And what I'm doing is safe for me and it's safe for you. But whenever I get outside of that, because I feel. Are you hearing me? Who cares what I feel? Amen. Talk to your feelings. You don't get a vote. Amen, Naomi. Okay. So he says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy. So when I prophesy, I'm edifying the body. When I'm prophesying, I'm saying things from God. I'm saying things that, edif saying things that build them up. 
And so I want to be in a place where, where I'm hearing from God for their good. Amen? I'm not here. I'm, I'm not. Some, can I just be real? Some of us want to hear because we want to be heard. <laughs> Some of us want to hear because we because we want to showboat. I'm the, listen, listen. I'm 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 not I'm not I'm not saying anything to anybody here because I love you all and you're all doing a great job. Amen. So, but but we need to we need to look put the mirror in front of ourselves. Amen. Because that's what the word is. Any man looks into the perfect law of liberty. Amen. The perfect law that brings you into freedom. Amen. So I look. What what is it? It's a mirror. I'm looking into the mirror, and the mirror shows me where I'm at. Show me what I look like, what's really going on. And so, so he says, follow after charity. Hallelujah. I want the love of God in me. I want the love, God, love of God working in me and working through me. So the love of God is working in me and through me. The love of God is doing what God wants to be done. Uh, again, you've got the peacemaker. You've got the peacekeeper in the house. Amen. There's, there's, there's a, there's a person set over. Uh, I don't care if, if you're in, uh, in uh, Salva Maratucha. That's that, that's uh, that's uh, MS-13. So if I'm in, if I'm in MS-13, you know, one of the most brutal gangs that murders people left and right, you know, with no heart. Don't you don't go in there and decide. I think I'll be the leader. <laughs> or, or, or they will sacrifice you to one of their demons, Amen. So, so the Lord made. There's a chain of command. There's a chain of command every place in life, and in the chain, the chain of command is there for, for safety. The chain of command is there for, for, for uh, order, Amen. What did God say to Abraham? I know him. I know him. He will order his house after him. Amen. Abraham's house was not disorderly. Amen. Yeah, he raised up his own army inside of his house. Amen. And so, and so that's what God wants. That's what, actually, that's what we all want. It's not fun in my body when it's out of order. Amen. Amen. It's not fun in my house when it's out of order. There needs to be order in all of it. And whenever it's ordered, boom, it's comfortable. Amen. You know, when it's ordered, it for for the for the young one growing up who needs to have the the um, the spoon, needs to have the rod of the the uh, the, the the rod of correction applied to the, uh, the 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 rod of instruction applied to the seed of knowledge. Amen. <laughs> it's not fun for him to have that. But you know what? Correct your son and he'll give you rest. Amen? If I don't correct him, then I'm the one who needs to, to be, uh, you know what I'm saying. Amen? And so, so I'm following, what are we doing? I'm following after charity. I want love in action. I want love that's right. And so love in action isn't a free-for-all. You look down through history and you can see you can see one of the even the one of the last big revivals that happened and it went nuts. Hallelujah. Don't get mad because I'm preaching good. When they start barking like dogs and cackling like a rooster in church, I'm sorry, that's not God. That's that stuff gone awry. And so so you know, if that hurts my feelings, okay, get them hurt and then get healed. Amen. Because God doesn't act crazy. He's not crazy. He's, he, he's the God of order and of peace and righteousness. And so, so, so we want to main, we want to make sure we maintain that so that it is, it's right. We're not here to put God on, on display and make him look like, you know, he just, he just accepts anything. Amen. So, so how, you know, I, I just, I just picked follow after. Uh, because it just felt like the Lord wanted me. So that just happens to be one of the verses. So Alan, if, the, if it's helping you good, if it's making you mad, I'm only here for a few minutes. <laughs> Philippians 3.12. Philippians 3.12. Not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after. 
is that I, may, that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. If you don't know what God called you for, then your first job is find out. Your first job is get quiet and find out. I was talking to my granddaughter yesterday, and I said, I asked her, do you, do you know what God's called you for? No. Oh, you don't know. And I said, well, well, let me ask you just a couple of questions. Are there things that you love in school and things that you don't love? Yes. I said, do you love math? No. Do you love science? No. Do you love the arts? Yes. Do you love music? Yes. Oh, okay. So then you're telling me that you're made for this and you're not made for that. Amen? Because if I try and get you to, to I want to send you to school and I want, you know, I want to take my son in. You are going to be on the Seahawks. But he doesn't like sports. Amen? I'm a dingbat if I'm trying to make him what he's not. Amen? And so, who am I? I'm glad you got prophets going on and prophecy going on because, because I remember when I was 25 years old and the presbytery came and they laid hands on me and they prophesied and, and they said, you're to teach the word of God. And I thought, well, I wanted to be something. I wanted to be one of them doing what they're doing. But the Lord put an X on my spot and he said, that's yours. Amen? That's you. So, so, would I be frustrating the grace of God if I was trying to be who I'm not? Yeah. Yeah, I would be frustrating the grace of God. I would be frustrating myself. Why, why can't I be this? Why can't I do that? I want, I want. Forget what you want. Amen. Find out what he wants and begin to flow into what he wants and you're going to get to be a happy camper. If it's always got to be your way, grow up. Amen. And so study to be quiet, the scripture says. Study to be in quietness and in confidence shall, shall be your strength. So just get quiet inside and let the Lord show you. I'm glad to hear you're fasting. Hallelujah. You want to get God's answers quicker than anything else? Just deny yourself, amen? Just just start fasting and praying. Just get quiet. God will speak to you, amen? The Lord knows how to get you right into the center of where he wants you and what he wants you doing. And and you know something? When you are where God wants you, the Lord says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. You know, I don't think the Lord puts a lot of superfluous stuff on the inside. Mommy and Daddy did not give me my DNA. Amen? God gave it to me. God says, I knew you. You know what Mommy and Daddy did? They discovered after I was born who I was and what was in me. Amen? And, and their job is help it to grow and become what it's supposed to be. Amen? Okay, I'm, I'm preaching good. Okay, okay. And so, so, so what God calls me to, that's my place in life. What God calls me to is going to begin to call out of me what he put in my DNA. The gifts, the gifts and the callings of God are irrevocable. God said, I put it in before you started. And so here you are now, and, and, and you've, you know, we go from grace to grace to grace. We go from strength to strength. Amen. What are we doing? I'm overcoming in life. Overcoming, overcomers eat hidden manna. That was, that's, that was above me before. It was hidden. But I overcame, and now, now I'm eating a new meal. True or false? Okay, and so, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm growing up into him in all things and being conformed to the image of God, amen, to the image of Christ, Christ who is the express 
image of God. Christ, who is the firstborn among many brethren. Amen. Christ, who is my older brother. He's my savior. He's my older brother. Amen. Christ, who is the image of God. And he wants that image perfected inside of me. Am I making sense? And so, so I'm going someplace on purpose. And he puts, yeah, I'm not the body of Christ. I'm a member in particular. Amen? And so, so he put inside of me what he didn't put in you, but he put it in me. And I'm to discover what it is he put in me, and I'm, be, I'm to begin to take that and use that so that the body gets edification from me. Amen? To the degree I don't know what that is. You know, if you hate your job, you're in the wrong place. I'm not saying quit it. You know, <clears throat> I'm just saying you're just you're not where you're supposed to be. Because if you will just wait on God and let God move you, he will move you into the place where where what he put inside of you is getting used. Because when you're in the place that God made you for, here, here's here's what's going to happen inside of you. You'll find you will find an attitude that says, I would do this for free. You would find inside of you, I love this. It, this isn't work for me to have to put, my, to put myself into it. I will burn the midnight, midnight oil. I will do this because I love this. Amen? For me to sit down with the Bible now and, and to study what, you know, the, someone else, for them to sit down and study those kind of things, it's like, for them, it would be like, oh, please, you know, you're asking me to eat my spinach or something, you know. <clears throat> you're, you're asking me to do something I'm not crazy about. But, you know, but that's what he called me for. And I just love to see those little intricate things that, that he shows to me. You know, you got a teacher and a teacher and a teacher and a teacher. And that one teaches completely different than that one, and they study different because, because they got a different gift. What's your gift? Where are you? Who are you? Function and learn to function and flow in what God called you to do. Amen. And so, so, which, and the gift itself will, will bring you into things and bring you into places that you will learn to function in those places and to overcome in those places because it's the calling of God on your life. And as you overcome in those places, the message that God wants to bring to his, this generation through you and to the world through you will be written on you. It'll get written on you and it'll become you. Am I making sense? Yes. Yes. So, so how can Paul be in prison? And he's locked in a cell, stone Walls, dirt floor, a little bit in the in the in the sewer runs through the prison, and he's in this place. And how can he be in that place and write to everybody else and say, "In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you." When they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. Amen. Now, what Paul says in Romans, therefore, God says He took His hand off. Yeah. And, and they got worse and worse and worse until, until God gave them up. He, and then he gave them over to a reprobate mind. Amen? Why? Because thankfulness is, is it's my charge. Thankfulness is not because everything is good. I'm not a thankful person because it's all going great. If I'm waiting for everything to get great before I get thankful... I am waiting way, way too long, and I am, I am borderline, I am borderline total off into sin. Amen? Yeah, because stuff happens incrementally, and, and, and if I don't get it right, I was just thinking about the beginnings of this church and where it's come from and, all, and what's happening and all that kind of stuff. In the beginnings of an organization, the way it's begun are the seeds of its destruction if it's not begun right. Amen? I'm not talking, I'm not talking about the seeds of destruction. I see good things here. 
but they're the seeds there's the seeds of the of, of destruction are in it if it's not begun correctly if if someone is not looking being honest with it, you don't go you're, you're not going to go do something for God because you want to go do something for God amen you can want to do all kinds of things and you just feel like oh I just got to do it well you know if the Lord hasn't if the Lord hasn't sent you, some were sent and some went. Amen? <clears throat> and, and if the Lord hasn't sent you, you may find yourself in a place where you are opening up the door for trouble on you and for embarrassment and shame and all that kind of stuff. You know, the Bible says, the scripture says, the end of a matter is better than the beginning. And the pure in heart are better than the proud in heart. And so, so if I say I'm going to do this, and I, you know, who cares what I said? Did God call me? Unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain to build it. So if God's going to build it, then God's the shot caller. And if God's the shot caller, then I say yes and amen. If God's the shot caller and he said, that's your place. But my place is a cell. And I'm in a cell, and it's not comfortable. And I write to Timothy, and I say, bring my coat and bring the parchments because I'm in this prison. And I'm there, and I'm there day after day after day. You know, I'm there all the time. And, uh, and I'm learning. I'm, I'm moving into a new place in the grace of God because he called me for a specific job and I'm doing my job to the best of my ability in God. It's the grace of God that, it, that, that calls me. It's the grace of God that I'm to grow in. It's the grace of God that he wants me standing in and, and it's the grace of God that he wants to work through me to accomplish his will in my life so I can serve my generation and the generations to come. Paul's in that place and he says, rejoice evermore. And again, I say rejoice. And you don't learn how to be a good Christian if you don't know what Paul says. That's 2,000 years ago. He being dead yet speaks. Amen or oh me? So what does God want to do in you and through you? So if you sit down and you make your plan, oh God, here's what I want, and they all lived happily ever after, and and you know, and I have all my beautiful things, and the Lord comes along and he goes, you know, next, and he starts writing his thing on there. And I say, hey, please tell me, Jesus, if you, God, if this is you, it would be wonderful, it would be just awesome. But he makes it just awful. Just awful, and I'm there wondering what happened. I thought you were with me. I thought you were for me. I am with you. The question is, are you with me? Amen? And so if I'm with him, you know what I'm doing? He must increase and I must decrease. If, if I'm with him, then I'm bringing me under so that I can walk with him and so that I can serve him and so that I can do the will of God. I count not myself to have apprehended that for which I was apprehended by God. But this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, I press forward towards the bullseye. He gave me a bullseye. He called me to do a job. I know what it is he called me to do. And I forget everything else and all the personal inconveniences and people don't like me and lie about me. And, all, and I put all that stuff aside and I'm going towards what God called me for because I'm here to get a job done in life. Amen? Amen. So I need to know what that is. There's a lot of baby Christians running around and a lot of people who, they have a name that they're alive, but there's not much too much life in them, the, the life of God. I'm making sense. And God wants his life inside of me because his life inside of me will, will produce him in me. Amen? God wants us to worship him because... You become like what you worship. People who worship money. Is money living? 
<laughs> Will, does money produce life? Mm. Money may answer all things, but money isn't the answer to all things. Amen? <clears throat> Answers one way or another. Uh, but God wants, he wants Christ in you as the hope of glory. Am I doing all right? Hallelujah. Amen. What time am I done? Am I done? Okay. All right. Well, I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Guys, give me a hand. Hallelujah. Do you guys want some more? Hey, one more verse. Come on back up here, Pastor. They're asking for one more verse. Well, you're supposed to ask. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you the verse. Just the verse. Listen. Listen. 1 Timothy 6.11. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, meekness. Amen. Follow after righteousness. I mean, First Timothy six eleven. If you want this church to live and to live right, you know what you follow after? Right. You only allow right. If it's not right, if it's a little bit right and a little bit wrong, get it out. Are you hearing me? Amen. And so, in your own life, you want to succeed. Can you look down the road ten years from now and you're still standing and you're still doing what God wants you to do? Is it right? If it's right and wrong. Probably you won't be standing. Amen. The, the camel doesn't put his nose in the tent because that's what he wants. He wants his whole body in the tent. Amen. And so, okay. Follow after righteousness, godliness. Follow after faith and love and patience and meekness. And I'm done. Hallelujah. Thank you. Okay, before we close, um, is there anyone here that doesn't know Jesus and wants to know Jesus and become born again? Now's your opportunity. Come on forward. Anyone here that doesn't have the Lord and wants to have him, now's your opportunity to receive him and become born again. Okay, you're all believers, amen? Hallelujah. I also want to offer an opportunity for anyone that hasn't been following the Lord, that's walked away, and now hearing the word, you have that in your heart, that desire to come back and to rededicate your life to the Lord. Raise your hand. Pastor was talking about your calling. He fallen away from the Lord. You want to make, make a recommitment to him at this time. Raise your hand and we'll pray for you. Okay. That's awesome. Yes. Okay, come up here. Come on up here. Pastor Bob, come here. I'm going to have Pastor Bob pray, and I'm going to put my hands on you and agree with you for rededication. God, thank you. Lord, we thank you. You said present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And so, Lord, as we come this day to present our bodies a living sacrifice, we ask in Jesus' mighty name for your hand and for your grace and for your strength. We're saved by grace through faith. We believe what you have to say to us, and we believe you'll give us what we need on the inside for us to accomplish the will of God. Strengthen my sister, fill her with your spirit, enable her, Lord, to overcome everything, every voice, every everything that, that uh, she desires to overcome, that she might walk with you 
in, in the place that you're calling her into. Strengthen her with might. Bless her in Jesus' name. Bless Miles. Fill him with your spirit. Strengthen in Jesus to walk with you and to overcome and to bring glory and honor to your name. We ask these things in your mighty name and we thank you, Lord. You said you'll do it. You honor your name, of, your word above your name. And so we, you said ask and you'll receive. And so we ask and we thank you. Amen. 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 This was a wonderful service, and the Spirit of God is just blessing us tremendously, not only in worship, but through the Word. Amen? And we just thank you, Holy Spirit. We're not going to take you for granted. We acknowledge your presence here today. We acknowledge your beautiful work that you're doing in your church and in your people. And we just thank you. We do. We get down low before you in the awe of God and who you are. And we pray, and I pray over each and every believer that um, we would walk in a manner that's pleasing to you. And we seek you, God. Christianity is not a religion, it is a what? Yes. And so I pray today for everyone, Lord, that our relationship, the intimacy, the passion, the love would just increase and that you would increase us as we decrease in relationship with you. So um, we're going to close the service. I'm going to pray over the food. Uh, we have food in the room outside in the hallway, right? <clears throat> and and um, Apostle Elizabeth, it's okay that we eat in here? Okay, so Lord, we just ask you to bless the food now that it would go to the nourishment of our bodies to bring us strength and energy to do your will, God. We offer up this time now to you in uh, fellowship and in celebration of your spirit here today. And I pray, Lord, that you find our conversations and our behaviors more pleasing, more pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. So with the tradition of regular Church of God, we don't like to have a lot of rules and stuff, but what we like to do is show hospitality. Amen? So we invite the, the women and our visitors to go first. So please, at the conclusion of the service, feel free to get up and go into the room next year and... Uh, Fill up your plate, and then the rest of us will wait. Amen. Be blessed. You're dismissed.